Good morning. Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church in Poughkeepsie, New York, and our virtual worship series. This video is for Sunday, September 5th, 2021, which is the 15th Sunday after Pentecost. We hope that you're having a safe and healthy week, but we also realize that so many of you were affected by the effects of, of Hurricane Ida, and where our thoughts and our prayers are with you. Uh, all the way from here down to New Orleans and everywhere in between, there's been so much damage and destruction and heartbreak and suffering. So all we can do is continue to pray for God to give all of you strength and presence and uh, perseverance to get through this. And for those of us who weren't affected, we have to find ways to help. But the first way we can help is to pray for God's guidance and strength, which we're doing. So also, our, our prayers and our thoughts and our condolences and our hearts are with the families and friends of two beloved people from our church who we lost this week. Al Kunselman, who passed away on Tuesday, and David Poole, who passed away on Thursday. These are great losses to our family and our community and, and to their families and loved ones. And we know that God is grieving with you, but we grieve with you too. And so please remember David and Al as you go through the service this morning and in the days to come. In the meantime, let's frame our hearts and minds before God as we prepare to worship him this morning. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Gracious God, throughout the ages, you transform sickness into health and death into life. Open us to the power of your presence and make us a people ready to proclaim your promises to the whole world through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. For the New Testament reading, we've got a long block from James for Sunday morning. I'm going to read you a couple of excerpts from it as they relate to what I'm going to say today in the sermon. So James chapter 2. Um, we'll start at verse 1. My brothers and sisters, do you with your acts of favoritism really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please, while to the one who is poor you say, stand there or sit at my feet, have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? You do well if you really fulfill uh, the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what's the good of that? So faith, by itself, without works, is dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so uh, the Holy Gospel for today is according to St. Mark in the seventh chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And this is verses 24 through 30. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came down and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin, and she begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And Jesus said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home and found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So, 
this lesson, the excerpts I read you from James this morning, they present us with quite a challenge to try not to show favoritism to any person or group of people because making distinctions among ourselves also makes us judges over others, which according to James will lead us into all sorts of problems, um, which is fine. I, I get that. But then you read today's gospel where Jesus immediately and apparently quite rudely shuts down the woman who comes to him for help and says, no. So wait, there is favoritism? I mean, that's not what James seems to be saying. So there really are those who are selected children and there's others who aren't invited to the table? Well, there's a lot of levels to what otherwise looks like a simple conversation in this gospel. So maybe taking a quick deeper look at who's actually involved in Mark's account of this moment. So in this, in this gospel, in Mark's chapter 7, Jesus has traveled over into this region of Tyre, which is a, <coughs> excuse me, a non-Jewish region. And he's come in order to stop and get some downtime and recharge. So there he is in this region of Tyre. And Tyre was at that time an affluent port city. Okay, so the, the Jewish farmers in the surrounding countryside, right, they produce food which they export through ports like this. And at the same time, these port cities have actually gotten rich on the backs of those poor Jewish farmers and all the other food produced by the countryside. So when this woman comes down, this Gentile woman comes down, she's from one of those affluent areas of the port city. So most likely, she's pretty well to do herself. So you want to think of this moment normally as a risk for Jesus, which it was to give um, an audience to a woman, because that normally didn't happen, much less a non-Jewish person and then a non-Jewish woman. There's like all kinds of strikes against him to even talk to her. So yes, it was a risk. It was a tremendous breach of religious law and custom for Jesus to even acknowledge her at that point. But it's also important to realize that this is a rich, affluent person coming down to make more demands of an already oppressed group of second-class Jewish farmer citizens, which makes her, in the eyes of the disciples sitting around the table and people, the people in the household probably, makes her twice as arrogant, you know? Um, maybe three times as arrogant, considering that she found Jesus when the text clearly says he didn't want anyone to know he was there. He did not want to be found, but she found him. I mean, how arrogant can you get? You're rich, you're a Gentile, you, you, you think you deserve extra audience, you know. So that's a tough situation. So when Jesus makes this apparently snarky remark to her, um, he's reminding her that it's difficult for the Jewish people to continue to see all their hard work taken, consumed by others, getting nothing in return. You know, it's as if when he says that, it's as if he says, hey, um, you know, after all your oppression and disregard for my people, now when you're in trouble, you come to us for help? It does seem kind of ironic. But can you relate to that feeling? You know, we work hard to be good people. We go to church. We try to live according to God's commands, you know. And then someone who has never cared about us or cared about our mission or worse yet, someone who has mocked us and thought that we were crazy or pointless comes to us and now suddenly wants to be helped. Why should we share our bread with those who are outside the church? You know, those who mocked us and made fun of us all this time, you know? Yeah, there does appear to be a hierarchy in today's gospel and there are some people who should be fed first. And most likely, that first food group at the top of the chain, right, is us. Baptized, confirmed, God-fearing, righteous living, Jesus-loving disciples. <laughs> or is it? You know, put yourself...
put yourself in the woman's shoes just for a minute. She too has taken a risk. This is a humiliating moment for her. She has a real case. She has legitimate concerns. And she has sought out the one person whom she believes can help. And even though she's from a, a higher class, here she is now begging Jesus for help. She has come to him in desperation and distress. And she has come to him in determination and in deference. So from what she says, she most likely realizes that she literally doesn't have a prayer. There are people in your life, people in your community, people in your family, people who may feel exactly like this woman in today's gospel, people who may feel like she always felt when things are going well, and who may feel like she feels now when things are way beyond her control. There are people in your midst who may realize that they don't belong, like they don't have a prayer. Nevertheless, they may, in fact, come to you. And what will we say? Will we say, ah, that's right, you don't belong here because you never cared before, you know, echoing Jesus at the table. And yet, and yet, is that what the woman was really asking for? You know, she, she wasn't asking for a place at the table. She didn't want to pretend she was part of a religious elite. She didn't even want to pretend she understood. She may feel pretty awful and crummy listening to Jesus. But you know, she's only asking for a crumb. Not the whole pie, just a speck. Jesus' snarky response to her, you know, isn't so much a rebuke as it is a leading question. He's essentially asking the woman to admit where she stands in relation to God. And where she stands is in humility. She stands on her knees. She knows she doesn't deserve what Jesus has to offer. Do we know? Do we deserve what Jesus has to offer? He asks the same question of us. What do we ask for when we pray, when we live? Do we ask for the whole pie? Or do we ask for just a crumb? And really, which group are we? Are we the group that knows we should get fed first? Or are we the group that's thankful to be fed at all. See, and yet that's not even the whole the whole lesson. But remember a couple of weeks ago uh, we went through the text where Jesus fed the 5,000 on the hillside, you know. What happened there? Do you remember? Well, I'll tell you. What happened was there was excess. There was a lot of excess. There's always excess. Acts of love always generate more than they consume. Whatever you do in the love of Christ always results in more than you started with. For every crumb of love that you share, you get 12 baskets of leftover grace. The point of the conversation at the table is this. Even a crumb is enough. James was right. There should be no distinction. It doesn't matter which side of today's gospel you're on right now. God wants more than crumbs for you. Even to those who hope for only a speck of grace, God gives the entire kingdom. So go ahead, take a risk today. You know, Come to the table, be fed with the crumbs of grace, the wine and the bread. And then go feed your neighbors with the basketfuls of forgiveness you, which you will receive from that. Because you know why? 
It may just be the crummiest thing you do all week. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now may the peace of God be with you always. Take a moment to share that peace with those around you in the room watching this morning, uh, family members, friends, neighbors, people on the street. Make a call. Send a text. Let somebody know that the Holy Spirit is with them as well. And now gathered into one by that Holy Spirit, let us boldly pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon each one of you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. And remember, you are the body of Christ, raised up for the world. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for being with us this morning, and we pray that you have a, a safe and healthy week. And again, our prayers are with you if you're recovering from Hurricane Ida, and our thoughts and our prayers are certainly with you if you are a friend or a family member of Al Kunselman or David Pohl. God bless you all and give you strength, and we'll see you next week.